Despite their historical and cultural significance, the Sami have faced centuries of systemic oppression, denial of their rights, and cultural destruction. The Sami, whose ancestral lands span across northern Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Russia, have endured centuries of marginalization. Historically, they were seen as outsiders by the dominant societies in these regions, even though they predated the national boundaries and states that sought to incorporate their land. The gradual expansion of nation-states came at the expense of their communities, and the lands they stewarded were often claimed without consent. During the 19th and early 20th centuries, nationalistic movements in Scandinavia pursued a homogenizing agenda to create unified, culturally cohesive nations. The Sami, with their distinct languages, traditions, and nomadic reindeer herding practices, were considered alien to this vision. The desire to integrate or assimilate them resulted in policies that systematically undermined their cultural practices. Language lies at the heart of any cultural identity, and they were targeted through deliberate efforts to suppress their native tongues. Beginning in the 1800s, governments across Scandinavia implemented assimilation policies, particularly in education. Their children were forcibly removed from their homes and placed in boarding schools where they were forbidden to speak their languages. Punishments, both physical and psychological, were imposed for using their native tongue, leaving many Sami individuals ashamed or afraid to maintain their linguistic heritage. During the last ice age, the Sami people's ancestors began their extraordinary tale. These resilient groups followed the retreating glaciers into one of the harshest corners of the world, carving out an existence in the tundra of Fenoscandia. The migration of these early peoples was not a single event, but rather a slow ebb and flow dictated by environmental rhythms. Around 9,500 BC, as the Ice Age ended, Europe underwent a massive transformation. Ice sheets that had covered vast areas retreated, uncovering a land of rugged beauty, dense forests, glistening rivers, and rocky, wind-battered coasts. It was into this unforgiving landscape that the ancestors of the Sami ventured, likely following herds of reindeer and other game. These animals were not just sustenance, but the lifeblood of their existence, shaping their roots, tools, and society. The Fenoscandian Peninsula, where the Siami would later consolidate their unique identity, was not immediately hospitable, even after the ice receded. The terrain was often marshy, the winters punishingly long, and the forested areas dense, creating natural barriers to both survival and cultural exchange. This isolation would become a defining factor in shaping the Sami's later genetic and cultural distinctiveness. Archaeological data links these early inhabitants to Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, whose lives were a constant negotiation with nature. Their survival depended on understanding seasonal migrations, harnessing the sparse natural resources of the Arctic, and forming tightly knit communities capable of insulating themselves against extreme cold. But perhaps the most remarkable aspect of their migration tells a story as much about continuity as it does about adaptation. Unlike many other ancient populations who were absorbed into later waves of agricultural settlers, the Sami managed to hold on to their semi-nomadic life and reindeer herding practices, which became a cultural hallmark. This deep connection to their environment allowed them to defy the homogenizing waves of Bronze and Iron Age farmers who introduced agriculture to Scandinavia thousands of years later. The earliest evidence of human habitation in Finland dates back to approximately 9000 BC, following the retreat of ice sheets after the last glacial maximum. During this early period, the region was populated by hunter-gatherer groups. However, the direct ancestors of modern Sami people emerged through a complex process of admixture between different populations that occurred much later. A crucial piece of this puzzle comes from ancient DNA analysis of remains from Bolshoi Oleni Ostrov, a burial site on the Kola Peninsula dating to around 3,500 years ago. These individuals showed a distinct genetic profile that included a significant Siberian genetic component, which is still present in modern Sami populations. This Siberian ancestry appears to have arrived in Northern Europe no later than 3,500 years ago, marking one of the earliest documented appearances of East Asian-related genetic material in the region. The Bolshoi Oleni Ostrov individuals carried genetic markers that are particularly illuminating. They possessed mitochondrial DNA haplogroups Z1, C4, and D4, which are commonly found in modern Siberian populations. Additionally, they carried the Y chromosomal haplogroup N1C1A1A, which is today the major paternal lineage among many northeastern European populations. 
particularly among Uralic speakers. This represents the earliest known occurrence of this Y-chromosome lineage in Fenoscandia. The genetic profile of these ancient individuals also included specific genetic variants associated with physical adaptations. They carried the derived allele of the EDAR gene, which is found at high frequencies in East Asian and Native American populations, and has been linked to characteristics such as tooth shape and hair morphology. They also possess genetic variants in the FADS genes, associated with adaptations to diets rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids. Moving forward in time to the Iron Age, ancient DNA from the Levin Luta site in western Finland provides crucial evidence for understanding the geographic distribution and movements of Sami populations. The analysis revealed that during this period, individuals genetically similar to modern Sami inhabited regions much further south than the current Sami territory. This finding aligns with linguistic and historical evidence, suggesting that Sami languages were once spoken across a broader area of Finland. The Levin Luta site yielded particularly interesting results, with most individuals showing close genetic affinity to modern Sami people rather than present day Finns. This suggests that the region, now inhabited primarily by Finnish speakers, was once home to a Sami related population. This evidence supports historical records indicating that Sami people lived in the parishes of central Finland as late as the 1500s AD. The genetic transformation of Finland's population appears to have occurred through a gradual process of admixture and replacement. Early Finnish speakers, who likely migrated from the south, particularly from the region of modern Estonia, began to intermix with, and eventually demographically dominate many areas previously inhabited by Sami groups. This process was accompanied by linguistic shifts, as Finnish gradually replaced Sami languages in many southern and central regions. Their DNA holds remarkable clues about their ancestry, defined in large part by rare genetic markers that set them apart from other Europeans and even their Scandinavian neighbours. At the heart of this uniqueness lies mitochondrial DNA haplogroup U5b1, a lineage described by researchers as a direct link to the ancient hunter-gatherers who roamed the forests and tundras of prehistoric Europe during the Mesolithic era. To grasp the rarity of this identifier, consider this. Haplogroup U5b, its larger branch, is already one of the oldest mtDNA haplogroups in Europe. Its emergence goes back tens of thousands of years, connecting the Sami not just to early Europeans, but to the rich ecological past of a continent in post-Ice Age recovery. The subclade U5b1 is even more exclusive and represents the Sami's specific genetic signature. The presence of U5b1 in the Sami population tells a compelling story of continuity. While much of Europe underwent profound genetic transformation through waves of migration and conquest, by farmers from the Near East and later invaders, the Sami remained relatively isolated in the northern extremes of Fenoscandia. This genetic isolation preserved their distinct mtDNA lineage a phenomenon supported by the Sami motif, a unique pattern of mutations found in their mitochondrial DNA. Studies show this motif appears in roughly a third of the Sami population, but is exceedingly rare elsewhere. This exclusivity isn't just a genetic curiosity, but a window into the Sami's Ice Age past. It suggests that their ancestors were part of an exceptionally early migration into Europe, and that they thrived in remote Arctic regions, less permeable, to the later agricultural innovations that swept the south. Genetic analyses have linked U5b1 primarily to regions in northern Europe and the eastern parts of the Baltic area, showcasing the ancient roots of the Sami in these cold, rugged lands. The Y chromosome story adds another layer to the puzzle. While the paternal lines of the Sami include haplogroups shared with neighbouring populations, such as N1c, which suggests a Siberian connection, it is the maternal mtDNA that underscores their enduring ties to Europe's earliest foragers. This distinction gives geneticists a powerful tool for reconstructing not just where the Sami came from, but how they survived and adapted to one of the world's harshest regions for millennia. For the Sami people, who have called the northern reaches of Fenoscandia their home for millennia, these icy landscapes also carry connection to an ancient Siberian past. Central to this connection is the presence of the Y-chromosome haplogroup N1c, a genetic marker that appears prominently among the Sami men. Haplogroups like N1c are passed down from father to son and serve as a beacon of paternal ancestry. While N1c is commonly found across northern Asia and Siberia, it also appears in distinctive frequencies among Finno-Ugric-speaking peoples in Europe, 
including the Finnish and Sami populations. This marker, with its origins tied to Siberian migrations thousands of years ago, is a vital clue that points to an ancient movement of peoples across the north. For researchers, haplogroup N1C functions as a genetic fossil, narrating a story of migration during the Neolithic, or even earlier. It is thought that carriers of this lineage travelled westward, traversing the expanses of Siberia and eventually reaching northern Europe. For the Sami's ancestors, this migration likely intersected with indigenous European hunter-gatherer groups, resulting in a unique blend of genetic legacies. But while the Sami share this marker with other Finno-Ugrich and Siberian populations, the frequency and distinctiveness of their N1C lineage set them apart. Unlike their Scandinavian neighbours, whose Y-chromosomal haplogroups often connect them to Central and Western Europe, the Sami exhibit a paternal heritage that leans heavily toward the East. This reinforces the idea that they occupied a genetic and cultural crossroads, isolated enough to preserve their Siberian connection while also absorbing traits from ancient European populations. One of their most fascinating adaptations lies in their ability to combat the unrelenting Arctic cold. Recent studies suggest that specific genetic variations among the Sami help regulate the body's natural process of heat production. Genes related to fat metabolism play an essential role here. Unlike populations in milder climates, the Sami eschew a reliance on carbohydrates and instead thrive on a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids derived from fish and reindeer. These fatty acids not only provide the calories needed to generate heat, but also contribute to cardiovascular health. An essential benefit when the body is under frequent stress from freezing conditions. Even beyond metabolism, the Sami possess a remarkable physiological ability to maintain warmth. They exhibit a higher concentration of brown fat, a type of fat tissue that burns calories to produce heat, particularly in cold environments. This adaptation might explain why they can endure sub-zero temperatures with greater ease compared to many of their southern counterparts. But survival in the Arctic requires more than just warmth. It demands an astonishing ability to withstand extreme dietary shifts. For centuries, the Sami's ancestral diet was dictated by scarcity and seasonality. This led to genetic adaptations in processing proteins and fats, enabling them to thrive on a diet dominated by animal-based nutrients in times when plant-based foods were inaccessible. For example, mutations in genes like FADS1 and FADS2, which are involved in synthesizing essential fatty acids, are more prevalent in Siami populations, fine-tuning their bodies for a high-fat diet. These adaptations are not merely biological, they have shaped Sami culture itself. Their semi-nomadic lifestyle, centered around reindeer herding, reflects an intimate understanding of the landscape and resource management. Reindeer, central to Sami survival, provided not just food, but fur for clothing and sinew for tools, emphasizing a sustainable and resourceful approach to survival. Meanwhile, fishing in the icy waters of northern Scandinavia ensured a steady supply of nutrient-rich fish, tying their genetic adaptations tightly to their environment. Genetically, the Sami differ markedly from the Norwegians and Swedes, whose heritage leans predominantly towards Central and Western European lineages. While Scandinavian populations are shaped by a fusion of Viking-era migrations and agricultural expansions, the Sami's genetic profile tells a quieter, more ancient story. As observed earlier, their mitochondrial DNA is dominated by haplogroups U5, B1 and V, markers that root them firmly in Europe's Mesolithic era. These lineages are largely absent in their Scandinavian neighbours. The Sami language, a branch of the Finno-Ugrich family, is more than a method of communication. It is a living history. Alongside Finnish, Estonian and Hungarian, it stands as a testament to the ancient migrations that brought Finno-Ugrich speakers to Europe thousands of years ago. This linguistic kinship connects the Sami to distant populations, miles away, yet tied by a common ancestral thread. While modern Finnish and Sami have evolved in parallel, their shared Uralic roots reveal a time when their ancestors may have shared territories, traditions and ways of life. The historical context of their linguistic survival is remarkable. Despite centuries of colonisation and cultural suppression, the Sami language continues to have dedicated speakers and communities actively working to preserve its legacy. This is no small feat, considering the encroachment of dominant Scandinavian languages in the regions where the Sami live. Their cultural resilience is underscored by their spiritual practices, folklore, and unique bond with the environment. Reindeer herding, a practice central to Sami life, is not just an economic activity but a symbol of their identity, 
echoed in their language, rich in specific terms for describing reindeer and Arctic life. What complicates Sami origin debate is the question of isolation versus interchange. Sami people are a blend of diverse cultures. Critical to understanding their origins is the role of historical events that shaped their foundation. Genetic studies suggest that the Sami population went through bottlenecks, periods when their numbers were significantly reduced, leaving only a few lineages to repopulate. Typically, population bottlenecks reduce genetic variation. Yet these bottlenecks were followed by stabilization and long-term isolation. Recognizing their struggles and supporting their cultural regeneration is not just their fight. It's a responsibility shared by all who believe in rights for indigenous peoples and the celebration of rich ancient past.